Welcome to another episode of Real BMX Racing, the podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by the BMX Connect, Answer That Squared, Wrenchman Racing, Eddie Blocks, 110% Nutrition, Extreme Squared, with a special shout out to Toby Henderson over there at Box Components. Today we have one of the fastest female riders in the 1720X USA BMX, and her name is, Cr I'm sorry, Grecia Krista Dulo. You got it. <laughs> What's up? Hey. <laughs> I know I chopped your name up. You got to let us know how to pronounce it so we can move forward on this. Gracia, Chris Adrulo. Gracia. 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 All right. Good. You know, I didn't want to go by USA BMX's announcement sometimes because they kind of chop people's names up all the time. So I was like, you know what? I got a lot of pronunciations for it. So I'm used to all of them, not going to lie. So y'all go ahead. <laughs> do, you, do you ever correct them? No, I just... It's it is what it is. I was like, okay, like I got called like Gracia, Gracia, Grisha. Even got to a point where uh, this person called me Grisaya. I don't know how they got, <laughs> started, but it, yeah. But I mean, all of them are good. Yeah. <laughs> right, you're like that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, welcome to the show. Basically, we're just gonna um, ask some questions to get to know you. Oh, yeah. Um, our very first question uh, is going to be coming from Shannon. Take it away. And it's always, how did you get started in BMX? So I started when I was four and this was back in my country where like we had this very tiny track, like 10 minutes away from my house. And my brother was actually riding before me. So I would just go to his practices with my mom. And then I had this group of girls, you know, like I was only four and then they were all also from BMX. And then every single time, like we were playing, and then they had, you know, they had to go back to the track. I will stay in the benches by myself. And I got tired of that. So I told my mom, I want to be with them. And um, that's how they got me a bike. And I started practicing with my friends. And then that's how I got into a sport. So you started with a pedal bike? No, it was just straight without wheels. And then just <laughs> threw me straight to the, the gate. No, I had no fear of nothing. I was. I was full, full on it. Yeah. Nice. You, so you said you started in your country. Where is your country? I uh, I'm I was born in Bolivia. So it, I was I was living there till eleven. I moved to the U.S. when I was eleven. So I started in Bolivia in a very small town called Montero in Santa Cruz. So yeah. I'm a nod like I know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> South America. Right, right. So when you came to America, where did you come? What Sorry? state were you in? What state did you I well my first national was Grants, but no. I've been to the US before. I I came for the 2017 uh, World Championships. And that same year, later on in November, I came for the 2017 Grants. That was my first ever national. Really wow. big, yeah. Wow. You showed up to the show. <laughs> yeah, my difficulties. I remember. I think I couldn't race rock, of course, but for grants, I missed my semi for class because I didn't understand how how the, the like the staging works because I was moto like, oh, you're moto two hundred ninety eight, and then I'm like, which shoe do I go to? And I missed my moto, but oh, I got second and open. And I was happy with that. Heck yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what was your home track when you came to the States? The Soto. The effort in being in Tulsa for the weekend, I come, I can't, I can't, I came to Texas and I stayed with a couple of families and uh, the Soto was my first home track and it's still my home track. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. So you've been riding all over the United States. Which one would you say is your, your favorite track? Oof, got a lot. I got a lot. Uh, probably Rock Hill. There it's it is. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I love like the new builds that they got every you know couple of years. They're really good, and especially this one. It's challenging, right. but I love you know the challenge of the tracks, you know, and of course Rockstar, Rockstar, the Rock Hill and Rockstar. Yeah, one that one looks like a fun one. Yeah. A lot of people don't like it, think it's dangerous, but it's like it's a super cross track. Like oh, that's what you should be expecting, you know. So right. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Um, sometimes, sometimes we forget how fortunate we are to be so close to Rock Hill. Cause, like, you know, you you know how it is. You know, you have something that's right there. You just uh, it's just, just Rock Hill, you know. Right. <laughs> but most people say that's like one of their favorite tracks to race. You know. Yeah. Um, one of the things I was also going to ask you too is, which one would you say is the most diff? What uh, you know, wherever, no matter where you raced at, which one was the most difficult track, technical track for you? Uh, I already know the answer is Hardesty. I think it has been one of the really difficult ones for me. Not really because of the first raid or their third or the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Mostly because of their second one. They got three big jumps and you're like are forced to jump. And if you miss one, you got to make it up for the second one however you can. So I remember the first time I went to it was really hard. Um, I was I was very good at skills. But this one was very challenging for me. And I haven't tried the pro set yet. And but I think it's gonna be also hard. It seems pretty big for me because I have that view for different, you know, like pros, like eight meter hills. I'm like, oh, this is shorter. Oh, Rockstar is more steeper. And then, you know, I get my own I get my own opinions about it. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So are you a jumper? Yeah, more more like a jumper. I'm really, I'm really tiny. I'm only five two, so I'm not really good at, you know, uh, gaining speed while manually. So. So you just jump it. Mm -hmm. So how, well, I want to ask you is how how old were you when you started jumping? Around ten or eleven. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, one of the things is when you're racing. So one of the things I want to ask you is. When you're in the gate, what are the one of the things that you do? Do you listen to the listen to the sound or do you watch for the beat? Watch for, I the, watch beat. for the beat. Yeah. <laughs> I try to when I try to listen, but I can't. I don't know how people do it. And then I got used to the watching the lights when I was really young. So yeah. And it's easier for like slow gates. You know where to go and it changes the whole view of it. Instead of listening, I think it's just stays the same. I don't know. <laughs> do you like the Do you like those new gates that they're using, like the ones they use the grands that are really really fast? Yeah, I think uh, it would have been better if they had like a different grip at the bottom because of the sand that we go mm. on the track and the, the other riders. But I like it; it's pretty fast. Yeah, it's pretty scary when you get on it though, because it's like only one single thing, and I don't know if yours is gonna drop for it. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> We talked about that all the time when they first introduced it, you know, like, and then I sat there and watched all the paddles as I was coming up to practice, you know, yeah. and it's, yeah, I, they all swear that they all drop the same, but yeah, it kind of makes you think, you know. So in that, can, in, in, so you're, you're basically like number four in NAG right now, and all the points are really, really close. Are you kind of nervous going into this last race? Like anything can happen, or are you just like, I'm just going to run my course? Like, how do you feel about it? Uh, about this about grants yeah yeah i'm gonna start my grants pretty pretty challenging i got the night five challenge on friday night so of course i'll be i guess with some mostly because of my age of the 17 20 which are you know jc moore uh ava corley kira boosted they're really fast riders and um i'm we're gonna see how it's gonna go. I think we all have, you know, our weaknesses and I'll have like our strongest move in, in the track. So um I am believing in myself. I feel confident in myself. I think I'm gonna do a really good job with it. It's about, mm -hmm. you know, being confident going into a race, you know, don't overthink anything, just you work for this. So there's nothing you have to, you know, question yourself about. Yeah. So what are your strengths in riding? Turns. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my moves and turns. I mean, uh, I try to work on my first trade, but I'm still, you know, struggling with like with my sprint, gaining a lot of, you know, passing people already in the first trade. Uh, I have really good gates, but my turns are what people get more scared of because I come out of nowhere. There's so many. <laughs> they're like, where did you come from? There's a between move and then you just came out of nowhere. So turns and third trade are my biggest nice. ones. So, so you talk about turns. Um, I've I've watched a lot of Drew Polk because I just love the way he's in turns. I mean, he just he comes out the gate sometimes. He knows he doesn't have the best gate against some of the riders, and you could just tell he doesn't panic. 
He just keeps it nice and comfortable. He's looking around, trying to figure out like where the hole is at, and then boom, he just goes for it, and he usually yeah. gets it. You know, it's yeah. just you know, I, I I've tried to ride like that. You know, just try to be comfortable and don't worry. Just kind of just you know, stay calm and like your chance will come. Just keep looking for it. You know. Yeah, I wish I could stay calm, but like you're risking. <laughs> you either risk it all or you just don't go for it. You know, you just back up. So. I risk it all. If we go down, we go down. Then the, you know, then the trophy. I love it. Plus, so that's how it works. You know? <laughs> okay. So then, with that being said, what would you say your um your biggest injury has been so far? Uh, just concussions. I think. Just concussions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't broken anything yet in my whole BMX career, nice. but my first con ever concussion was when I was. 11 it was in new mexico or 12 it was 12 yeah i was 12 it was in new mexico and we had this like like sandstorm inside the track and they didn't stop the gate they just kept on going i still remember that all the seven riders had goggles except me so i couldn't see anything coming out so i was just you know riding with my eyes like barely closed and then the wind was very strong that it pushed me going into the second one where i landed with my whole head I woke up like around three, four hours later, and my parents told me that the first thing I said when I woke up was, what happened? I don't remember anything. Or I also said that, is the race finished? That I already raced, but I, that's all I remember. I remember a little bit when I went, when I woke up and I went to the, to the trainer bed to being checked, but that's all. I. That was one of my biggest. Then we went to my second one was in Rockstar. And I was manually in the big jump that's go that goes into the first turn, the big like you no know, step table. Mm -hmm. And I manually. And that was a bad choice of manually. And I was just coming from a national from Florida. So I was 20 hour drive and a straight to practice. I was mm. so I looked out, landed on the asphalt of the turn, and I also got a concussion there. Um, that was my second biggest. And then my third was recent, it was last year, also in New Mexico, same track. <laughs> wow. Um, and um, yeah, I, I also had a big one when I was younger, when I was 10 or no, eight. When I was eight, it was in my home, it was, it was in my, home country in Bolivia and I was coming down the gate and the first jump shoot was shooting you up and I had to hit my brakes so I went over my bars and then the piece mm. like since my whole visor broke I landed my whole face the visor broke and the small piece got almost inside my eye and I still yeah. had a scar right under like my bottom lashes it's it was crazy but it was a nice experience because I after I was <laughs> to the hospital they put a band-aid to my dad was like do you want to race and i'm like yeah and i won the national after that with <laughs> one eye. that's crazy fearless right i'm like you didn't even hesitate or nothing just went back out there and just did yeah, it again i was only eight years old I was, I was, right so maybe maybe not remembering in the crash is what helps you you know just keep <laughs> going forward you know because and the thing is, you know, being fearless, I'm sure the other riders know that and they kind they might change the style of riding. They might not be as aggressive because they know you're more aggressive, you know. Oh yeah, they they know it. They definitely know. <laughs> it. I, you can feel it. I as long as they see me it's like, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> or she's here." <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Have you um made a decision whether or not you're going to go pro next season or are you going to continue to race in the 1720? This is my last year as an amateur. Um, this is going to be my last grand since 1720. Mm -hmm. um, I'm already jumping into the big races. I started in Kentucky mm -hmm. and Rock Hill. Those were my, those were my first uh, eight meter hill races. And then from now on, next year should be my only pros race because I got the world and I'm doing the junior woman. Yeah. So. So when you're racing worlds, uh, you're racing for your home country or you're racing for? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be racing for Bolivia. Okay. Or, you know, my status doesn't apply. I can't apply as a USA BMX rider. 
So I have to raise for my country and I'm giving them hope. That's what I'm, th I'm focusing on hope. I mean, focusing on because Bolivia really didn't have lots of, you know, pro riders that will be on the top, you know, podium spots, but I'm one of them. I want to give them hope. And then right now, every single post I, I post on my social media, mm -hmm. we all use the hashtag, uh, we back to dreaming because since it's a very small country, not a lot of writers get known. We're also not very known. I mean, not a, lot, not a lot of people know where Bolivia is. So that's what I'm raising for them. And I mean, awesome. I'm mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Well, so what was like your biggest surprise when you jumped in to race some of these pros on the eight meter hill? Like, did, you, did they surprise you like how fast they were or just how skilled they were? Or was it just like, ah, whatever, they just riders just like me and I'm just going to go do my thing and try to beat them. Yeah. I mean, since I can't really get out of the country to like look at all those people's, all the girls and the levels and how they are. Um, I got Ava as one of my, you know, riders I can, you know, compare myself to see how she is and how the other riders are. So I think Rocky was the first one. I realized it had a lot of level and then especially because of the, of the UCI, you know, world champion, uh, Veronica. So I saw myself in a little bit in the back. And then, yes, that's when I realized, wow, these girls are actually fast from this big hill. And it makes you, you know, like push yourself more and then do better for the next one. So, yeah, it was a big change. Um, I, at Kentucky, I didn't really see it it's until Sunday, of course, because of the UCI. But, yeah, these girls are fast. And but a lot could happen in the track, you know. You know what blows my mind is that I went to Grands last year for the first time. And so I've seen some of the like the pro riders, some of the newer pro riders, females. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of you guys are five, two, five, three, five. I mean, you're tiny, you know, like 120 pounds, maybe. And I mean, just fast as hell, though, you know. It just blows my mind. I saw Mackenzie Gayhart like for the first time, I think, in person, and I just was so surprised how small she was, and I just didn't know, you know. And then to come to find out, like Lexus Kobe and you, and you know, your old guys around five two, five three, you're tiny but just muscles and just strong and skilled. It's just I, I like, love yeah, watching you guys ride. I mean, I like watching you guys ride more than the men pros, just because I just think yeah. you guys have just you. I don't know. I'm not going to say more skill, but I, just, I, just, I just enjoy watching you guys ride a little more, probably. I mean, even Mariana, she's like, she's really old now, of course. I mean, she's <laughs> at the end of her career almost, but she's been my idol since I was, you know, since I started this sport. And then when I saw myself next to her with the same height, and then that's that's where she stayed, and I think that's where I'm staying. I'm 17, I'm 5'2", and everyone makes fun of me because, like, <laughs> they're asking me, like, do you shrink because of the time? <laughs> it's just... But I think uh, being small is a very high advantage um, in the BMX side and the track, the skills. You learn how to control your, your bike more. So... Thing is a very and that's how you know you just group yourself going into a certain you're really tiny and it has that's that's how they not see you so mm. so you think that applies to the men riders also no i think it's different <laughs> different i think it should be the opposite i feel like it's the opposite if you're tiny then you gotta you know work double i think right so, right mm -hmm. I mean, I ask that because I'm usually smaller than most of the guys in my class. All these guys tower over me. They're way bigger and stronger. And it's like I'm trying to fight with them. And it's like it's hard, you know? Yeah. So are you on a pro size bike or? I mean, right now I'm on a pro XL bike. Okay. So I'm seeing if I can get a double XL, even though I'm tiny. I'm trying to get, like, when you're on the pro side level, you tend to like actually stretch more your body and then just because of the first jump and then many like since it's more jumping rather than manually mm -hmm. you do need like to like stand more your arms and legs so i think a double like say i mean a double yeah double mm -hmm. double xl double pro xl but right now i'm doing pro XL, which is not bad 
What have you ever considered riding like an expert size bike, like an expert XL? Mm-mm. All right. And like maybe some of the, I mean, just because you guys are lighter and you probably can, you know, meet the requirements of like some expert parts, maybe expert wheel sets or expert frames, just because they're a little lighter. And yeah, I, it depends. Some people like really light bikes, some people like more of a heavier to have more balance in their bikes. It, it all depends. I'm like sitting in the middle. I like, I, mix my bikes with like things that have to be you know heavy and then the other ones that have to be light like carbon rims your carbon forks and yeah that's how we balance our bikes do you do your own do you do your own maintenance no i just ride the bike. <laughs> <laughs> i just ride the bike my dad is my maintenance guy so he's always checking on it okay my concerns every single time and that's uh, that's what I do it every single time before the race. Mm-hmm. I check my bike every single time. And it's like I go do my warm up. I take five minutes for myself and I check how my brakes are. If, you know, if the pressure on my tire is good, if my chain is, you know, well. And then that's, yeah, that should be something that every single rider should do. I was say one thing I noticed too is people will check their tire pressure like every day when they race. Is that something that you do? Yes, every day before even practices, even if it's for one hour practice, you gotta check your pressure. And I always keep mine high over a little bit, a little bit higher than eighty. Okay. But we all have a different our differences. Some people like seventies, other like sixties. You know, pressure. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Do you do you adjust your pressure according to the track you're riding? No. Sometimes or the weather, maybe if it's wet, you maybe. No, I think I just ride the same. It it all depends on how you ride on the track, basically. I don't think the ba- the bike has to do something with it, in my opinion. So then, have, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, do you have issues riding in the rain or riding after it's rained? I think it's all mental when it comes to rain because, like, you don't know if you're going to crash. You don't know if you're going to flip the gate or slip in the turn. So, uh but I don't really have a problem with it. Just in the turns, which that's where I got to be careful on. That's the only thing I focus on. You know, I just don't go low. Just stay in a very, you know, moderate angle. So, yeah. When you're training for it, when you're training for a national, do you, um, does your diet stay the same as it normally is? Or do you change it up going into a national? It stays the same. Probably going into the national, like the, like the last week, that's where I changed a couple of things. Maybe in the track, I just, you know, do some light work, uh, done some light work, like a couple of gates. You know, I don't really do a lot of skills because doing work, you know, working so much on your skills can lead up to many consequences. You might crash. Right. And, but I do work on some light stuff. And when it comes to workouts, yeah, I do light up myself. I don't do weights, just, just stuff. So- uh, keep my body active, like running, maybe just doing some stretches every day. Yeah. So no gym for you? I do gym. All right. I thought you said no, but no weights though. No weights, like no carrying your body with so much weight, like squats or trying okay. to get your bags in the like in the week of train of racing. I was running the week of training. Okay, the week of racing. But you do go to the gym and lift weights when it's not when you're not going into a national though. Yeah. Okay. So what about your gearing? Do you change your gearing at all or do you keep it the same? Like, do I change jerseys or? I know, like you're, like, go ahead. The, like the sprocket on your, you know, like if most people run a 44, 16. Oh, you just, you. Do you, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not, not that. <laughs> uh, I used to, but now I just keep it the same. I've been riding the same this, the same one for since I was twelve, so I'm used to it, which is a forty four speed. And I'm, I cannot, you know, switch it every single time because it's, it takes me a minute to like get used to it, and then finding my rhythm to it. And uh, actually, for Rock Hero, I had to change it like two weeks before that because I wasn't feeling you know, comfortable with the one I had, which was so much lighter. It required more pedaling than, you know, yeah, it required more pedaling and I wasn't gaining any speed. 
So for this one that I'm on, it's so much better, especially for the big heels one. So I'm happy with it. But I don't change my gears at all. So let me ask you this. How long before a race, like just say if you got a new bike, I mean, you wouldn't get a new bike a week before a big race and race it, would you? Like, how long would it take you to get accustomed to that bike? Probably like a month less than that. If I'm, you know, constantly riding every single day, probably like maximum of two weeks, you know. But it shouldn't take that long to get used to a new bike. So it would be okay to get a brand new bike right now and to head to Grand's with that bike? No. (laughs) (laughs) No. A good decision to make, but I mean, if the if the opportunity shows, if they're like, okay, we're gonna give you a new bike, then yeah, I'm happy with it. <laughs> right, right. Okay. And so, what about adjustments on your bike? Like, how long before a race? Like, would you or like, you know, what's the window of not making adjustments? You know, I mean, the reason I'm asking that is because Grands last year, I ran clip pedals for the for the maybe five months leading up to Grands. Mm-hmm. And something, I don't know, just something told me to adjust the pedals just a little bit. I'm talking about the cleats on my shoes. Mm-hmm. And I just probably moved them over maybe just a couple of millimeters. I swear, it wasn't much at all. But I was just having issues clipping in the whole weekend. And it was just scary. Because I get up to the gate, you only have a few seconds to clip in and get ready. And I just could not get my left pedal in at all, like every time. And, and before that, I, I never had an issue. You know, so I definitely suggest people don't do that. And I was just wondering how long it takes to like adjust to, you know, a, a change in your bike. You know, I mean, everybody's different, I'm sure. But I was just. I personally probably like a week before I check my stuff, you know, and then I hate being I hate going to, the, you know, to the maintenance during race days because it just it just messes with my head. I don't know. It's like, oh, I'm not going to have enough time for warm up. But before I do it before nationals, probably like a week or days before. That's where I check everything, if everything's fine. And of course, you know, if you feel something, you know, like a concern about your clip shoes are not, you know, strong enough, then I might just adjust that or my chain. It's also, but, you know, changing parts, that's what I'm talking about mostly. That's where I don't do it. But adjusting, that should be like a daily thing especially you know right before really big races so i think i've only heard like one other rider talk about that saying that they i think that was kj romero that we talked to he said that he checks his bike before every lap you know um and and most don't i've seen i, I volunteer at the track and so i i open up the track sometimes for the clinics and so i would ride the track just to make sure the track is safe I find chain ring bolts in the corners all the time. And it just blows my mind that people are losing chain ring bolts in the corners. You know, it's like, what are you but then doing? You never heard nobody say that they lost one, right? <laughs> no, but I've seen people wire, I've seen people wire tie their, their chain rings to their cranks, you know, because they lost a bolt. Yeah. I mean, at a national, I'm talking about, you know. Um, but um, but yeah, I was <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea to check your bike before you got to get on it and go 90 miles an hour around freaking turns. And yeah, do you do you have a problem eating the day of the national? Yeah, I <laughs> cannot eat during race days. I have to wait the whole day and then finally eat. Wow. So even in the mornings, I cannot, you know, have my body full full. It's like. Since I have anxiety with food, it's like if I eat, I'll eat a lot in that moment, and then that will mm. be. <laughs> ready to go to bed. That's how I feel. Yeah. <laughs> so before, you know, in the morning, something light, something like a coffee with some, you know, like a sandwich, you know, something. You don't gotta be a full meal. And then if I gotta keep my body, you know, with something on my, if I gotta keep my stomach with something during the race, mm-hmm. probably like fruit is very good eating fruit it's like my hungry killer (laughs) so bananas strawberries something but after the races that's when i actually you know you know have peas i got time to just you know beat myself with something and i'm not worried about anything so but when you turn pro your whole schedule is going to change as far as like nationals you're going to be on a schedule you know yeah that's going to be nice right 
Yeah, that's what I was talking about. During Rock Hill, I didn't eat anything all day because of the the time because we oh, get. Yeah. So it's like first round is at nine, then your second round is at ten fifteen. So, and that's always like, and then when it starts getting closer to the main events, it it gets shorter. And if you got quarters even more sure you got 20 minutes to your next, you know, quarters, you got 15 minutes to your semis and you got 30 minutes to your main event. That's how it is. So you don't really got time to like go ahead and then wait in line to your, you know, your food and then eat. So it changes. I mean, if you, if I'm on the amateur schedule, then you do have the time. Cause if you make it out of first round, you got the whole day after that. Right. But I haven't, since I'm not really into that anymore, probably for the next year, I'm not going to be racing any, you know, amateur races. That changes for me. Right. So what schedule would you prefer? Would you prefer the longer day or just a shorter day? Get everything in and get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, you see all these pros riders leave early of the national. You're like, man, I wish I could, you know, be heading to the hotel right now. Yeah. It has its advantages, but it also has its disadvantages. You got to wake up extra early. So you go to your practices. Yeah. Um, I remember Rock Hill since like races starts at eight. You need to be at the track by seven fifteen. So everyone, everyone else was sleeping. You needed to head, you know, you, you needed to head to practice and then even race after that. So it's like you gotta, you know, make that effort of waking up two hours extra early. Because if you have practice at seven, and then you need to wake up at six. You got your time to eat, your time to organize your stuff, head to the track, do your warm up, practice, and then race. But you're done early, so. <laughs> what What would you say your most memorable win has been so far? Twenty nineteen, my rock and grants has been till this day, my best. You know, the best year I could say because I that was a good year that I had and I won the two mains to two main events that was the biggest one I ever you know so far that I've got so what's the one race you wish you could do over those two <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah still every single time I get the chance I look back at the videos and then the memories and then the moments and how I felt after that after across the line in front and it was amazing the support from everyone and that's it i mean that's also a year that i could read done you know before because i was that was before covid so i think i had a good experience before everything changed when you're on the track can you hear people like screaming for you cheering for you can you hear the announcer Can you hear yeah. the announcer announcing, like, you know, somebody's coming up on Chris Dulo? I'm laughing <laughs> in the helmet while riding. So I do listen to that. Do, do you talk when you race? No, I don't. I don't. I can't. I, I don't think I, I can. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I breathe. I'm just, you know, five seconds of no breathing, but I don't talk for nothing. Okay, so then I guess I must be going a lot slower then because if somebody's like right in front of me and I feel like I can catch them, I'm like, you better speed it up, crack up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially at locals, I'm talking the whole race, man. Like uh, right? we just have fun, you know. At a national, I wouldn't freak people out doing that because I don't know everybody. But at a local where we know each other, I'm on the gate talking. I'm I'm riding talking. It's just fun. Oh, I'm doing it at national. I don't care. I get up in the gate and I'm literally like. Looking over, I'm like, y'all better bring your A game because I'm coming with the heat this round. <laughs> <laughs> and they just look at me like, yeah, okay. And I'm still way in the back. When I'm <laughs> and I was like, maybe I shouldn't have told y'all my plan. I might have been able to stay closer if y'all didn't know I was coming with the heat. <laughs> yeah. The heat. Um, oh, oh, go ahead, Shannon. I was going to say, what is your favorite part of BMX? Family. The feeling mm. of being part of a family your team, the people that support you, those little kids that come up to you for a, you know, a high five or a fist or a good luck or a good job. That's the best. That's, that's the best, be, most beautiful thing for me. Love being, you know, going, I love getting to a track, going to my team, meeting everyone, saying hi to everyone. And then just, it just feels amazing. I think that's, 
the most beautiful part about BMX. And what is your team? My team is a uh, Houston uh, racing team. Okay. I, I've been on it for over a year. I was on, yeah, I got on last year and this year. We're still deciding whether we want to do that for next year or not. We're still talking with my manager about what are the plans. So, but yeah. Cool. One of the things that I have is, so I have this video here. Hopefully you can see it when I push it. So I just want to be able to make sure that you can actually see it. And um, I'm going to run it right now and then we'll talk about it. Super X ladies headed downtown. Chris Tadula got a pretty good shot with this one. Shea going to try to get things going on. Panero, oh, he lost a couple right there. Oh, big pile up. Here we go for the top of the podium, though. Chris Tadulo and Shea going to try to work things out. Now second turn. There goes Shea. It's her birthday today. She says, come on, Gracia. Let me have a little bit. As he goes down that three straight away, bring him into that last turn. Coming back at us. Chris Tadulo going to bring this one back home. She's got it on lock on the top spot. The birthday girl, Lachey, going to pick it up for the two. She says, all right, I'll take the two on my birthday. K-Bike trying to. When, okay, so when she popped up in front of you on the, before the last straight, did you feel like, oh, crap? Or was you just like, I got it? Uh, my first thought, not going to lie, this was like the truth honest. My first thought was, oh, my God, my dad is going to kill me. <laughs> 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 That's going to be mad after this. <laughs> because you left the door open in turn two? Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah. we're very strict on that. Like, it has to be perfect. My dad is... You know, it has to be everything perfect. So after I saw that, I was like, ah, it's not no longer a perfect race, I guess. <laughs> but I had a pressure about it. I knew what I had to do. I had the speed, and that's the reason why I pedaled the whole turn. I was not expecting it, of course, but those are the things you need to be ready. No matter how, where you are, how positioned you are, or, you know, you got to be ready for it. I mean, it's BMX. You got to expect everything. A single, you know an elbow or you know someone pushing you up or someone taking you out you get expected and that's what it's that's what bmx about it's, it's spontaneously it's random so yeah you could tell like soon as you felt her you, you got on the gas you were like oh hell no <laughs> but you killed that rhythm section that rhythm section yeah, is a lot harder hard. than it used to be um but yeah you flew through that you know and that's where you pulled her yeah yeah i Really, I was really happy I had the speed. I after I jumped, I was pedaling in the whole turn, and then I was all the way in the outside, of course. So that's where she took advantage of going under. Yeah. So she was very smart for that. But after I jumped the first one, I felt with so much speed, I cleared it. I was really scared of not clearing it because if yeah. I would have cleared it, I think she was gonna get the she was gonna get the the title. Yeah. But I cleared it. Uh, that that came out smooth. So I felt like even more smoother for the other two jumps and then the last manual. Yeah. Nice. If I remember correctly, that Sunday, the sun was like beaming in everybody's face. Mm -hmm. That was like crazy. Like even with your like goggles on and everything, it was like, you couldn't see nothing. Nothing. Actually that started Saturday because Saturday people, lots of pros riders were complaining mm. about the sun because you couldn't see because of the reflection. Right. One was on the other side and coming going into the jumps, you can't see the lip on it. Yeah. And it was very risky because you couldn't see anything on the first jump. It was crazy. You couldn't see, you know, when you was gonna go up and then land. So and that's why for Sunday they changed the schedule for I think for an hour later because okay. of that. so yeah, it was even with goggles, it, you couldn't see anything. So who is your favorite amateur rider to watch? Amateur oh. rider. To watch you, you can name one male one female and then pros also like the, which pros do you like watching amateur i i don't got a preference i just watch them like i guess i don't got a favorite to watch i just know that well whenever i come you know i the races are coming up i watch them i have you know mm. i have my eyes on this you know if there are three really fast guys i have my eyes on three of them you know mm -hmm. um but i don't got a favorite one to watch i just you know, I just know, oh, this one's going to be a big one. They're all going to go for it. Um, pros, my best ones are Joris Staude, Mariana. I really love the way they ride. It's amazing. I'm just, yeah, that's how 
I push myself. I watch their races and and also Joris, Mariana, and there's one more. Oh, Nick. Nick came in. Nick came in. Lately, he has been a little bit of injured, but the way he races, the way he stays calm during the races, and then whenever you look at pros, you just don't watch them in the track. You got to see how they act after, you know, or outside the track. And it's like, okay, well, if they're like this, I'm also going to act like one of them, you know, because that's your goal. It's becoming one of those, you know, big pros. And yeah. Right. I mean, so normally when you go to the track, like I said, I go to the track. I mean, I'm nowhere near the level of, of what you guys race, you know, but um, I mean, I have fun. I'm joking the whole time. I'm just all over the place walking. I'm not really taking it too serious. I mean, you guys have to, but do you have fun at the track? Do you like get a I, little loose or? I organize my time. Uh, I get to the track. I say hi to everybody, you know, you know, a couple of conversations here, but in the middle of it, I focus on my training. I don't talk to anybody. I don't make conversations. I could say hi to you or, hey, how is it going? But when it's my time to go to the gate, I don't talk to anybody. Wow. And I do my sessions. I do, okay, I'm going to do the first section. It's going to be all my first straight and second. Then my second session is going to be only only gates. And my third section are just skills. And no, during the last section, I just, you know, talk to everybody. That's when I'm like, hey, you want to do second straight? Or, hey, do you want to do a gate with me? Or how's it going? Or we're just gossiping. But I'm very strict on my practices. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I mean, the reason no. I asked that is because I noticed there was a pro rider. Uh, matter of fact, um, it was Anthony Bacardo. I mentioned this a few times because it just blew my mind. Um, at Hardesty, it was, I forgot, it was some months ago. And it was him and Cam um, Wood battling it on the, the rhythm section. And um, Anthony Picardo just blew by him. And to yeah. blow by Cam Wood like that is just, I've never seen it before. And I was just, it blew my mind. So I kind of yeah. went back and I started looking at Anthony Picardo's Instagram. I started looking at his Facebook just to see like where he was mentally before that race because he did so good. This dude was on, like, you know those Lime bikes that you rent? Oh, yeah. You know, like, throughout the city. So he's on those Lime bikes. He's riding it, jumping it, bunny hopping it, doing 360s. I mean, he's just, like, having fun, smiling the whole time. And then I went to some other guys. Um, I went to Cam Woods' Instagram and a couple of other guys. Matter of fact, Cam Woods right there, right? Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, they, they're serious. You know, they're, like, they got their bikes. You know, they got their bags. They come in. They're not smiling. They're not really talking to anybody. And then here's um, Anthony Picard over there, you know, just like riding through the city and eating and just laughing. And and just because I felt like he was just so loose during that time that he was able to perform a lot better than he normally would. Mm -hmm. and, and I just I heard a fighter say that also it's like when you fight, you have to be loose. You can't be tense. And yeah. I, I think that could apply to BMX also, you know. Yeah, anything. Um I mean, my dad always says that when you're on the track, you race like a man, but outside you're also, you know, back to your old self. You're a girl, you know, you can paint your nails and all of this, but you get in the track, you're, you're a man. You got to race like one of them. You got to show you, you got to show how aggressive you are. But a practice is, you know, besides of me being a strip with my training, that's only inside. That's when I'm on the gate and nobody has to talk to me. But like riding around outside, I'm the most funniest person. People are laughing at me. I'm laughing at people. And then it's just, you know how I am. And then they respect that. They respect, okay, well, Gracie is training. You can talk to her later, you know? Right, right. Yeah. So, so do you have a coach? No. Is your dad your coach? Yeah, pretty my, much? my brother, my coach. Yeah. So has anybody came to them asking them to coach them because they seen how you are, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they're especially kids. I'm currently, you know, like this, like two little kids on my home track, but they get their time, like the last hour of practices. That's where I give them my full attention. I get off my bike. I'm not riding around. And it's like, okay, it's me and you and you and me, you know. So they get their time. And, but I do, I've been teaching, teaching kids for, I'll say four years. But since I'm with nationals and then I'm training all the time, I don't have that consistency of only one kid. But that's my future plan. In the future, 
I want to have my own program where I teach kids at the track and also do them outside, you know, activities, you know, focusing on their nutrition. Okay, what workouts do you need to do and build like a plan for this kid for a week? That's, yeah, that's my future, you know, job, I'll say. So as a coach, are you a lot like your dad was to you, like the way you are to the other kids? Do you tell the other little girls like you need to ride like a boy? That's personal. I just <laughs> <laughs> uh, because everyone has their own way of racing and then their yeah. own way of riding. Mm-hmm. I get the body you know, teach them how I ride because that would be impossible, you know. And then I just tell them, beat you, you know, build your own, you know, ex- um, your own phrases that will motivate you, you know. And also, I do teach, teach them about my experiences, about what my dad has told me in the past that helped me. And then you, it can help you too. So, uh, yeah, I'll say, yeah. What was the most, um, I guess I'd say not difficult, but what was the most, what's the one track that you were actually scared of? And how did you, how did you mentally get over it? Let me think a little bit. Cause I know. Or maybe just one obstacle at a track that just. Yeah, yeah, you know, obstacle, yeah. I think it was the beginning of Houston when like all the jumps are very slippery, but like not slippery. I mean, very lippy. The first jump you had to jump it, you couldn't bump it. Now you can do both of them, but like, it was when Rockstar was just built. It was, you know, a lot. There were lots of crashes. All the jumps were scary. You can hear the brakes, you know, going on all, you know, all day. And then I think that was one. I think like over. It was very mental. It was a lot of mental work because you were scared if you're gonna like jump it or not. If you're gonna crash. But I think that was. That was the time where, like, I was actually scared of, like, the track. So how do, how do you deal with, like, being on the gate, you're set, you're ready to go, you think your motor's coming up any second, um, the motor before you, somebody crashes really bad, now you're sitting at the gate for the next 10 minutes while they scrape this guy off the track or whatever. It's, um, <laughs> like, how do, you, how do you deal with that? I know at the Grands, I was sitting there and I got, dr- like, just physically and mentally drained by just, because the, the moto in front of two motos in front of a guy crashed. The moto in front mm-hmm. crashed. You know, I crashed in my moto. So the moto behind me, these guys were sitting there waiting for three guys to get scraped off the track. You know, like, how do you deal with that? You know, do you just like kind of just don't look over there or are you just like, like, I, I just, I'm trying to figure out how to deal with that because it's like, it sucks being on the gate. You're all pumped up, ready to go. The adrenaline's going. And now it's like, all right, let's go, guys. Let's go get in the gate. You get in the gate. And I was like, all right, hold on. You know, it's like, geez, bro, come on. Like, all the race got drained out of me. By the time the gate went, I was just like, I didn't even know why I was there. I'm like, am I racing? Like, what am I doing here? Right. Uh, I breathe. I got to, like, check mm. my breathing. I think, you know, bring in and out. Because the, the, the longer they say, you can feel your heart pumping. And it has happened. Everyone has. A, it has happened to me. With like, you feel your heart pumping because of the adrenaline, of course, like you said. But just breathe in. You know, if you can, you can just you know get out of the gate. You know, keep your body warm. So, because a lot of riders are just sit there and then they lose all their energy. Some are yawning and then you know. That was me. Keeping the adrenaline, trying to keep it breathing. You know, do some. You know. Stretch your arms, your shoulders, your legs, shake them off. And yeah, probably that's the better way to like deal with that kind of situations. Think about that. Smart. Yeah, got to keep that in mind. I was like, because I was the total opposite. Like, especially if I know like my motto is coming, but I have time, I just go limp and I just like let everything just go down. And people walk by me like, like you're ready to go to bed. And I'm like, I'm trying to save my energy. Like, that's what you know, I'm like, I'm trying not to use nothing. Use it up in the gate, and then uh, now that you say that, I'm like, maybe I should have probably just kept moving around. <laughs> so, what is your routine between motos like when you're on the amateur schedule? Just say, and you have you you transfer the first round, and now you have hours until the, the semis or quarters or whatever. 
Like you don't just sit around. I'm sure so you keep moving, right? You keep stretching and yeah. I sometimes I just <laughs> if you have if it's a long national, then yeah, I just sit down. But if it's a short national, you're gonna, you know, keep yourself awake. Cause um, you know, those nationals are draining now. So if there's a lot of people, you know, going to sleep and then before, by the time they gotta go race, they're yawning, they're tired, they don't wanna race anymore. But First round, of course, you got to warm up before it, you know, try to transfer. It doesn't got to be like a main event. Um, then after that, you got your time to eat, keep your energy up, walk around. That's my routine. I just finish. I get dressed back on my comfortable clothes. And then when I see myself, you know, like draining and I'm not just feeling like myself, that's when I go walk around, get my bike, talk to people, be more social, you know. And right. just before the races, you got to get your mind back into, you know, race, focus, concentrate, ride around and warm up and get ready for your, like anything, your main event or your semi or your quarters. So like just say on the weekend of a national, I know some of the pro men riders, you know, after like on a Friday night, they'll go hang out and party. Some of them. <laughs> Do, do the females do that also? Like, uh, are some of the females known to go out and party? Like, you don't have to mention any names, of course. <laughs> All of that yet. I, this is my first time listening. I thought they would just go back in their hotels, rest, do some recovery, and then just be ready. The ones but, that are winning are. <laughs> um, I wouldn't do that, in my opinion, but... If that's how they are, then that's good for them. But I mean, it's a good way to like refresh your mind. I think some riders does it because they had a bad day of racing and to forget about all that, you know, and then feel better for the next day, they go out, you know. But yeah, it's it's not something bad, but it's also you gotta, you know, be careful why the things you the decisions you make because you don't know what that could lead into, you know. Right. Um but yeah, it helps a lot. I've done it, but not like partying, of course. I could just go, you know, to a restaurant, celebrate with my family, and then, you know, you know, forget about what happened in the track and then just do it better the next day. Mm -hmm. Like, is your dad really hard on you when you don't do your best or when he thinks that, you know, you should have done better? And how and how hard is he? Like, is, does that. he like... I think after the race is when you still mad and upset about your race right after that it's the moment when you gotta you know shut it you know shut it out loud what you did wrong and then just accept what he's saying because he's also right he saw the race but after the race once like you calm down you you know and i mean the race is done already then you can just get back into your old self and then just forget about it but you already learned your lessons you already know what you're doing tomorrow and then you already know what you're not doing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just that one moment where he's really hard on me. But then after that, we're laughing, forgetting about the moment, you know, good, good. and other things, like I said, you know, going to, you know, like going out to eat and yeah. So he switches the coach, co the yeah. coach takes the coach hat off, throws the dad hat on. Good. Awesome. Good. Awesome. You can't be a coach all the time. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how he is. I mean, during race days, during race, he he tells me, "Don't treat me like your dad. Treat me like I'm a coach. So you gotta listen to me. You just don't pretend I'm your dad because if I think like he's my dad, or he's not gonna get mad. He's just he doesn't care. Then that's how you don't get. That's how you don't have your mind on race, on the race. So and then after you know the race is over, then you can treat me like a dad. You know, hey dad, how are you? How was your day? And that's how it is. <laughs> that's how we are." Right. You you've been doing this for a long time now. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a point where you didn't want to do it anymore? You just yeah. like I'm I quit, bro. Like I'm done. That's it. Yeah, that was 2020 and 2021 were my hardest hardest years ever. I've went through a lot, and yeah, I even got to a point where like I'm just gonna sell my bikes. I mean, I this is not for me anymore. That was 2020 when I got second of both of, both of my mains in grants. And then 2021, I barely made mains in grants. I got fifth. I didn't make it on the rock. 
And that was like, what is happening to me? I mean, I was training, of course, but nothing that I was doing was helping. So I went into the 2022, you know, without any, you know, motivation, just, you know, thinking, okay, what's going to happen now? I, I was just feeling like, you know, that maybe that was the end. But of course, nothing comes from one day to another and I didn't give up. I'm still on the sport and it's just about patience. You know, I think it's all about patience. If it, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, you know, use it as your advantage to get better. Mm -hmm. Have you, have you played any other sports as a kid? Yeah, I played soccer, swimming, volleyball. Really? And when I got here, I did the cross country and track. Okay. And baseball. I mean, how much wow. do you think all of that's helped your BMX riding? I mean, just being that athletic, you know? I don't think nothing. I'm not a big fan of group sports. I'm more of an individual. So being part of those volleyball and soccer teams, it was not my thing. I mean, no one, no one is thinking like me. So, yeah. Right. Right. But just... <laughs> I mean, I would just do them as, you know, as a game because I was doing BMX at the same time because I didn't stop since I, you know, rode, like I got in a bike as a four-year-old. I'm still on it. And I was trying out different sports, but they were not something I wanted to switch to. It was just something maybe to keep my body active, to try something new and have fun with it. You know, see how it would feel if I was part of a different, how other athletes, athletes think you know it's not just bmx and how we think maybe you know swimming thinks differently maybe there's things that would help you from it and yeah, yeah. nice i mean sound all well, well rounded right there <laughs> so just say after this is all said and done like how do you want to be remembered i'm sorry after your bmx career is done with you know yeah. Um, I mean, the riding part. I mean, you could always coach or whatever. Like, how, how do you want to be remembered? Like, when people look back and be like, oh, I remember her. Oh, yeah. That would, that would be awesome. I mean, that's where I'm working on. I don't want to be forgotten, of course. I want to, you know, stay on this board as much as I can. And um, maybe with the Olympics, if that's, I mean, that's my goal. That's my dream. You know, being remembered from there would be awesome. Like Mariana, she's remembered from all her, like her, all her gold medals. And hopefully, you know, with how I'm going, with the work I'm doing, with sacrifices I'm, you know, I'm making, hopefully I get to that point in my life. Have you ever had a chance to sit and talk with her? Yeah. A couple Very of times during races, outside of races, we had a conversation how, you know, we can, how she can help me on really? a couple of things, you know, on the mental side, on the BMX side. Awesome. That is awesome. Right? That's pretty cool. Um, well, how often do you train, though? Like five times a week, six times a week? Um, I rarely have rest days. Mm -hmm. I Because the only reason I barely have them is because I train in the mornings. Mm -hmm. So I have all day to rest. So, and then wow. at night, that's when I go to the track, of course, like six to seven or six to eight thirty when it comes to practice days. But I'm, I train in the mornings as early as, early as I can. So I'm not a big, no, something before eight. So six to eight or now my routine, it's about waking up at at uh, six, about five thirty, starting my workouts at six six fifteen and finishing them on at seven thirty. Then I have the whole you know day to rest, do my recovery. If I want to sleep, I can go to sleep. If I want to go, I can go out. But it's five times a week, and then weekends are just track days. I don't do any weights. I don't do any gym. But like five times a week, that's where I use gyms, the weights, and. I do my workouts and stuff. Do you prefer riding at in the daytime or at night under the lights? Both. I never really had a preference on like which time I you know I prefer riding. I think they're both great. You know. I just realized that I like riding under the lights better than I like riding during the day. 
I don't know. It just hit me the other night. I'm like, I love this, man. You know, I'm there during the day sometimes also, but it's just at night for some reason. It's just, it's just a little different. Monster, being that you are 17, does this mean that you are in your senior year in high school? Or did you already graduate or? I already graduated. I graduated a year early. Oh, wow. So the junior and senior together. And um, right now I should be in college, but I'm taking a break because of how my schedule is looking like with BMX. It's lots of racing. And then lots of, if I was in college, I don't think I'll be, you know, good at it because of the days I will be missing. Mm -hmm. Because when you get to a pro level, you need to be at the track at least a week before to get, you know, to get to know right. what the first jump is. The eight meter hill is not something that you just, you know, go and then just throw yourself. If I was on the amateur side, I wouldn't worry about it. It's just a gate. It's only pretty sure you already know how it works. But for eight meters, for eight meter hills, you do need time to, you know, get to know how it is and how it feels. So high school, high school was really hard, especially because I was doing two years in one. I did like lots of AP classes. I was getting out of school at 4.30 every day. It was very... It was very hard, but I'm really proud of how I ended in pretty good grades. I got a good um, GPA, got a GPA of 92.5. So I'm really happy. I'm really proud. And, and it was a big sacrifice. It was a big deal for me. I was going to say, was it harder for you to, to like focus on school with COVID going on and everything? Oh, yeah. Very hard. <laughs> uh, just I mean, there were days that I didn't even pay attention to, but that was back in my freshman year. Like, so it was very hard, but I went even during the COVID pandemic, I think during, in my school, they had the option of like being at the school or mm -hmm. being at your house. Even with all that, I was still going to the to school. Maybe wow. that would help me with, you know, staying focused, Right. but it was very hard to like concentrate. And I think the COVID also messed up my level in BMX. That's how my level went down, really down. And then that's when I was thinking of maybe quitting because right. all the girls were getting faster except me, you know. Why do and, you think that was? I mean, where I was living, it was in the city. You couldn't get out of your house no matter what. So, And mm. I was living in a very tiny place where you couldn't even do a single workout. So maybe all the girls were, you know, had the chance to do a sprint or maybe they had the track time. But where I was living, it was impossible. So did the track close down? Yeah, all of and it. So, got you. Because we talked to other people and there's some tracks that never closed down. You know, they would continue riding. They might not have raced, but they had the track open for some of the like more elite riders to come in and keep training, you know. Say, I wish I had that experience that I know those chances, but here it was yeah. very impossible to get out. Like, not even go to a park, do like a one mile run, you couldn't do anything. Yeah, wow. yeah. So, what's your favorite movie? Hacksaw Ridge. <laughs> Are we talking about with Clint Eastwood or Which the new version? Which it's, one? Which version are we talking about? It's a military-related movie. It's right. about this guy that joined the military, mm -hmm. but was a big, you know, believer in God. So okay. one of the rules that you know the men the, that they had was not killing. Right. And he didn't want to touch a gun, so he went through a lot of because he couldn't touch a gun, and then he didn't want to touch a gun. Right. So it, it was about sacrifices, about how he saved a lot of people without even, you know, killing a, a single person. Wow. Um, but yeah, that's a fair movie. Nice. Okay, so, and what type of music do you listen to right now? I'm more into the indie song, like, you know, Frank Ocean, uh, Brent Fires kind of songs, you know. Yeah, I'm more into that. Is that what pumps you up before a race? Oh yeah, I do. It does. It does. Maybe uh, I don't. Re I don't really listen to a lot of you know hyping like rap songs. I do, but it's not like an often thing, you know. 
then I do have my music, my Hispanic music, but that's just, you know, for partying or maybe just get, you know, <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> right, right. Do you have a favorite food? All pastas, any pastas. A big pasta girl. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. That seems like one of the, the best, like, carb up appetites right there that people like to use before races or after yeah. races. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's. So I'm guessing, so I'm guessing Saturday night you're at Olive Garden. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Shen, do you have anything else? I think we touched on everything. Yeah, I don't know. I can't think of anything. <laughs> I mean, we could go on forever. I right? swear, you know, talking right? about bikes and BMX. With this podcast, how how was the you know? Um, basically me and Shannon were just sitting around and we were just sitting there like watching the pros. And we remember when we were young, we used to race too. And back when we were young, they had, um, magazines and stuff where you get to like read the articles about your favorite, you know, rider and everything. So with the technology and everything, we were like, we should just put together something that could touch on, you know, getting you guys the light out there and to shine and get to know you because honestly, you know, you, you got a lot of fans out there. And you can sit there, like you said, pasta is your favorite thing. That might be that little girl who's like, oh, my God, I love pasta, too. Like, you know, something that just makes you guys have that connection where she just feels like another reason to love you guys even more. So that was one of the reasons why we decided to do the podcast and basically just, you know, put a, put a light on you guys and help you guys promote whatever you guys need to promote. So if you guys have a product or anything like that, we can throw it on there as well. And um, just, you know, just bring more awareness to an awesome an awesome sport. Awesome. That's really that about right, Shannon. You want to you want to add on the music? <laughs> what can I add to that? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's pretty much what we put together. That's nice. Yeah, it's uh, that's that's awesome that you guys started this. I mean, I didn't know, and they need to start doing more of this. I think they got coffee chatter, but it's they don't do this as much often as us. You know, BMX riders would love to, especially. Right. Because we want this sport to be become, we want it to become bigger, you know, and we gotta find a way to like make it, you know, make it as big as motorcycle or motocross. So, and doing this, you know, podcast, getting to know athletes and especially pros, it helps, you know, not only us but also the little kids. So, right, it's awesome. Right. Yeah. Right. And we're definitely gonna have you back on next year because we want to know how your first year in pro goes. Mm -hmm. Right before grands to see how you're feeling and how you how you how you've uh, excelled from here. Yeah. So, awesome. um, anything else, Shannon? Or are we good? Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you we're so good. much. Thank you for your time. For the opportunity, I'm very thankful. Very happy with this. Yeah. All right. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. I'll see All right. you. All right. Bye. <laughs>